Hey everyone, I'm the Sega Scourge and welcome back to another Sonic What If for part 2 of What If Emerald Survived. I'm so hyped to be finally continuing this story, since Emerald's arguably my favourite Sonic character to boot. While this story may have started off relatively basic, trust me, part one was merely setting the stage for what's to come. It gets crazy from here on out. Last time, we delved into the history of Emerald and the Gizoid, as well as recapped the story of Sonic Battle, before finally delving into the events that resulted in Emerald's survival. I highly recommend watching part 1 again if you need a catch up since it was a while ago. But to summarize, Emerald, after succumbing to his old programming, threatened the Earth with a super weapon in a mad attempt to absorb more energy. To bring him under control, Sonic used the Master Emerald's power to transform into Super Sonic and after battling his friend, a miracle occurred. Super Sonic's power and Sonic's decisive spirit managed to bring Emerald back to his senses and return him home. But not entirely in one piece. Emerald's right arm was whipped off by an over-excessive strike from Super Sonic. Tails, doing the best he could to replicate Gizoid tech, developed a brand new arm for him. This arm wasn't seen in part 1, in fact it wasn't even designed, but thanks to a talented viewer called Cameron, we now get to see the replacement limb in action, its colour scheme inspired by the Tornado 2. Members of my Discord community have lovingly dubbed this arm the Prower Arm. Anyway, following that, the story of Sonic Advance 3 kicked off and with it, Gemeral was introduced. In this interpretation of the story, Gemeral was unable to snag the Seven Emeralds and transform in Advance 3's finale, since all Seven Emeralds are still tucked away inside Emerald. This meant that he wasn't defeated, recovered, and reprogrammed to live with Cream and Vanilla. This what-if version of Gemeral is still united with Dr. Eggman, still an unyielding super badnik and the enemy to the Sonic cast. But not only that, the pseudo-Gizoid has developed an immeasurable amount of malice towards Emerald, seeking to prove himself superior to the original, similar to how Metal Sonic views his organic counterpart. Gemeral's hatred for Emerald is only matched by Emerald's disdain for him, viewing him as nothing more than a cheap knockoff, which only exacerbates their vain antagonism. Also, again, yes, it's pronounced Gemeral. I refuse to believe it's Gemeral. The only reason Emerald was called ML in Sonic X is a translation error. It was meant to be Emeru, named after an emerald, so that must mean the other is pronounced Gemeral. Gem, what the hell is a gem anyway? I don't care what the kanji says, I know I mistranslated it, but somebody get Ian Flynn on the line and ask him how it's produced. It's not Gemerl either, okay? I will I will not have... Dude, you gotta calm down. I mean, no, no, really no people, people no, need to... I, I am in full... Spell, it's Gemerl. So it is Gemerl, okay? It, I don't want to hear it. It's Gemerl. Subsequently, after Eggman and Gemerl were defeated, Emerald reunited to the company of his friends and spent a lot of day-to-day -day time with them, further integrating himself into their lives and enjoying all the fun things they do together. But for one of them, adventure calls. Sonic the Hedgehog's thirst for thrills has led him away from his companions. Where does he intend to go? Well, he decides to take a trip to the beautiful coastal city of Soliana to check out the Festival of the Sun, presided over by Soliana's sovereign, Princess Elise. That's right, everybody. Strap in, stay calm. We're heading into Sonic 06. Sorry to any Rush fans out there, but it's my consensus that Sonic Rush takes place after 06. And 06 is, of course, canon but that's a topic for another day. Anyway, just quickly before we begin, and this isn't a sponsor message, I just wanted to say that 70% of my watch time from viewers over a monthly period is mostly from non-subscribers, people just visiting the channel. So if you're new here and you enjoy this Sonic What If series, please consider subscribing. It's free and it helps out a lot. Anyway, we start off this story identical to how Sonic 06 opened up. Sonic arrives in Soliana just as the festival is underway, but just as the opening ceremony comes to a close, Dr. Eggman makes an outrageous entrance, bombarding the floating city with missiles from his egg carrier and surrounding the monarchy with egg gunners. The Doctor aims to kidnap Princess Elise in an effort to utilize the flames of disaster she keeps locked away inside her. Sonic the Hedgehog soon arrives and swoops in to save Elise, escaping into Castletown with Eggman hot on his heels. While Sonic is distracted dealing with a blockade of robots, Eggman moves in to snatch Elise while his back is turned. But just as the large, detachable hands reach out to seize their target, an orange and yellow blur charges into Eggman's Eggmobile, slamming it into a nearby building before it can make its move. What the? 
Don't tell me that pesky fox boy is here as well. The amber streak comes to a halt, skidding in front of the young Princess Elise. Nope. Just your friendly neighborhood gizoid. The lovable robot boy is here. Emerald followed Sonic to Soliana due to the link he and Sonic have. Again, I'd recommend checking out part one if you want to learn more about that. Emerald strikes Sonic's classic finger wag pose, flippantly taunting Dr. Eggman as the mad doctor curses the droid's sudden appearance. The doctor then realizing the actuality of his botched kidnapping opts for a strategic retreat in the egg carrier, vowing to capture both Elise and the gizoid when the time comes. Emerald runs in the direction of the egg carrier's getaway, yelling and clenching his fist, demanding that Eggman come back and fight like a man. Easy there, Emerald. We'll get him. Don't you worry. First acquaintances play out between Elise and Emerald, with Sonic introducing the young patrician and the general situation surrounding Dr. Eggman, during which Emerald then cuts in with a particularly no-nonsense remark. Sonic, I don't think Mom would like you running off with random girls. Mom, of course, in reference to Amy, who insists Emerald call her that. Sonic hushes his surrogate son as Elise befuddlingly giggles at the conversation between the two. She then thanks them both for rescuing her before expressing her concern for the festival goers and hopes that none of them were hurt in the attack. However, Sonic tells her that she isn't safe right now and they need to find a good place to hide for the night before tending to the townspeople. And so, the next day, after taking residence in an old inn, Sonic and Emerald escort Elise to the Soliana police in hopes that she'll be safe in their hands. On the way, they run into Tails, who informs them that Eggman's airship was spotted near the beach. Upon hearing this, Sonic leaves Elise in Tails' care and tells his little buddy to protect her while he and Emerald chase down Eggman. The two heroes take off as Tails and Elise depart for Soliana Castle with an entourage of Soliana PD. But after blistering through Wave Ocean and past a particularly rattled orca, the duo ultimately fail to catch up to the egg carrier, which sails away into the clouds far ahead of them. Worried for both Tails and Elise with Eggman still at large, an anxious Sonic instructs Emerald to head back into town to provide extra protection for the both of them. He feels bad not putting more faith in his best friend, but he just has this nagging feeling and doesn't want anything bad to to happen to him. Emerald stubbornly expresses his disapproval, wanting to go with Sonic in case he gets ambushed, but finally he agrees once Sonic pushes a little bit more. Splitting up, Emerald heads to the castle and regroups with Tails while Sonic pursues Eggman into the desert. During this quiet interval, Emerald, Tails, and Elise spend some time talking in the castle's throne room. The princess learns much about Emerald's origins and his relationship with Sonic, while he learns much about her and the burden she carries. But just as Emerald giddily erupts into a fantastical tale of his prior adventures to cheer her up, the sounds of shouting guardsmen and chaotic commotion can be heard outside. In the same moment they realize that something's wrong, the large stained glass window comes crashing inward and in a shower of glass, Gemeral flies through. A squadron of Eggman robots soar in behind him as he and Emeril sharply lock onto each other. We meet again, Mr. Gizoid Knockoff. I hope you're ready for another monumental beatdown. I made a promise the last time we met. I intend to keep it. In an instant, Emeril and Gemeral clash in midair, beginning their antipathy-fueled battle. However, within moments, Emerald realizes that Gemeral is quite a bit sturdier than he was the last time they fought, to which Gemeral responds by revealing the numerous battle enhancements he's undergone since then. Turns out, Dr. Eggman managed to snag Emerald's arm, the one knocked off by Supersonic before the Death Egg exploded in Part 1. He later studied the appendage's unique composition and durability and integrated his findings into Gemeral's armor. After all, it takes a lot to damage Gemeral. You can barely dent the guy, and it took super form to cause any real damage. And even if Gemeral can't copy abilities like Emeril can, he's still strong in his own right. And an armor upgrade based on an original gizoid gives him the added edge he needs. However, Emeril's library of skills begins to once again overpower his counterfeit cousin, and whilst Tails contends with Egg Man's drones, Gemeral sees an opening. In a last-ditch effort, he rushes towards Elise in an attempt to grab her and escape, but Emerald quickly intercepts him, tackling him and sending them both crashing through the limestone wall and falling out of the castle. They fly across the lake whilst grappled onto each other, dishing out punches back and forth as they tumble towards the 
streets of Soliana. Coincidentally, this just so happens to be taking place right as Sonic's fighting with Silver after returning from the desert. As the two robots take a nosedive, Gemeral manages to spin around and position himself on top of Emerald, causing the Gizzoid to take the full force of the impact as they slam into the ground in a plume of dust and concrete between Sonic and Silver. As the smoke clears, Emerald is laid flat out, slowly pulling himself to after the rough landing. Sonic, seeing his friend in trouble, tries to step in. The distraction allows Silver to take hold of the Iblis trigger and send him flying into a wall. However, before Silver can deliver the finishing blow to the weakened Sonic, Amy Rose steps in and shields him just like in the original game. As this unfolds, the incapacitated Emerald starts to get back up. Tails, having made his way from the castle, flies down to his aid, but before he can, Gemeral launches a sneak attack and clotheslines Tails, knocking him aside and flying back over to the castle, where he successfully captures Elise and takes her to Dr. Eggman. Silver makes a hasty retreat as the four heroes slowly collect themselves. Sonic goes on to explain that Eggman lured him into a diversion. The Doctor wanted to either separate him and Emeril, or just keep one of them busy away from the princess, allowing Gemeral to swoop in and do all the dirty work. Sonic states that if this silver guy hadn't shown up, he would have been able to make it back in time once he realized what was going on. Amy starts to tear up, feeling as though she's partly responsible for all this by obliviously helping Silver, but Sonic puts an arm around her and reassures her. Hey, it's okay, Amy. It's not your fault. You didn't know. Yeah, don't worry, Mom. The next time we see that freaky hedgehog, we'll make him pay for tricking you. Amy thanks both of them, thankful to have such a sweet family. Sonic groans with the awareness that Amy's still playing house with him and Emerald. Abruptly suspending the heartwarming moment, Sonic tells her to get somewhere safe and stay out of Dodge, as he, Tails, and Emerald head into the industrial center of Soliana's new city. Amy is, of course, annoyed for being left behind. Knuckles passes on a message from Dr. Eggman, and the Doctor's deal comes to light. However, unlike the original story, rather than offer a trade of a Chaos Emerald for Elise, he demands Emerald instead, being that Emerald houses all seven Emeralds inside him. At first, First, the team drop the concept of negotiation instantly, Knuckles getting angry while Sonic and Tails dismiss the bargain as there's no way Eggman would stay true of his word. But then, out of nowhere, Emerald cuts in. All right, if that's the deal, then fine by me. What, Emerald? You're okay with this? Yep. The gang try to talk him down, but Emerald is single-mindedly fixated on doing the right thing for the sake of the princess. He reassures them, saying that he'll be able to bust out of Eggman's confinement in no time, and even if he couldn't, he knows they'd just come and rescue him. Plus, the Doctor won't be able to remove the seven Chaos Emeralds from his body no matter how hard he tries. Sonic smirks, closing his eyes and patting Emerald on the back, commending him on his selflessness and how much he's grown since they first met. He's not a kid anymore. He's a real hero. Their decision made, the four of them proceed to Eggman's base, White Acropolis. There, they reach a silvery circular room, and just overhead, Eggman stands with Elise behind a pane of reinforced glass. The madman demands the Gizoid to approach the middle of the room before he'll release the princess. Sonic tries to warn Emerald, recalling a similar set of circumstances that led him into a trap once. But Emerald thinks nothing of it, simply saying that it'll be fine. As he steps forward and into the center, a low-pitched hum is heard coming to life. Sonic was right. This is indeed a trap. In a split second, a compartment opens up on the ceiling and Gemeral drops down behind Emerald. Attached to his back are large grey pipes that extend from him into an unknown connector somewhere above. Before Emerald can even react, Gemeral grabs a hold of his head tightly with both hands. In that same moment, Dr. Eggman slams a lever and Emerald begins to scream. An unbearable searing pain courses through him as he collapses to one knee in agony. Team Sonic immediately spring into action to save him, but as they do, a barrier of purple electrified energy blocks their path. They try to break through as it further surrounds them, but the field is too powerful. Gemeral grasps as his hands begin to glow a luminescent white. Then, amidst Emerald's turmoil, he feels something tugging at his core, as if a part of his very soul is being dragged out of him. Gemeral is siphoning the Chaos Energy from inside Emerald. Inside the Chaos Emeralds. Remember, Gemeral can manipulate Chaos Energy. We saw him do it in Advance 3. And this machine that he's strapped into by those pipes functions very similarly to the contraption from the beginning of Sonic Unleashed. Except this one is designed to take only a fraction of that energy, not all of it. Emerald's limbs seize up. As do his copied abilities, there's nothing he can do. 
He cries out as the turbulent, multicolored energy pours from his body, funneling through Gemeral, through the pipes coming from his back and into Dr. Eggman's machine, the Solaris prototype. Now that the machine is fully active, Team Sonic are swept off of their feet and spiral into a portal formed from the apparatus on the ceiling, hurdled to a distant place in time. As Eggman turns off the machine, Gemeral finally lets go and Emeril slumps over, severely weakened. Gemeral motionlessly watches the shuddering gizoid at his feet, as if savoring the moment, appeased that he's had the chance to outplay his adversary twice now. Emeril exhaustedly demands to know what's happened to his friends. Eggman explains that they've just been teleported to another period in history. Past? Future? He doesn't know, as this was merely a test run of the device. All he needed was a strong enough power source to stabilize the prototype. Emeril realizes that his over-eagerness to take charge of the situation has once again put the lives of his friends in peril, just like when he was lured to the Death Egg and nearly destroyed the Earth. He's been duped once again. Despite all the skills and information he's gained, he feels as though he's learned nothing. Furious at both himself and the villains before him, Emeril comes to his feet and staggers forward, hopelessly aiming to fight Gemeral and Eggman. Gemeral continues to stare, not moving a cybernetic muscle, and as Emeril attempts a punch, his body finally gives out and he collapses. Before long, Emeril is taken away and confined by the Doctor's robots to be prepped for later experiments. However, the copybot's incarceration doesn't last long. Emeril wakes up inside a sealed container to the sounds of loud banging. He sits up as the fierce thumps continue. He then looks up to see numerous rounded blows cave in the container's roof, and before long, the lid bursts open to reveal Amy holding her Pico Pico hammer. She's come to rescue her surrogate son with the help of Princess Elise. Before they can even catch their breath, a security alarm is triggered. The room turns red and sirens bellow throughout the base. Realizing they're about to be descended upon by Eggman's hordes, Emeril tells Amy and Elise to escape while he goes to rescue Sonic Tails and Knuckles. Amy understands. She knows by now that she can't dictate Emeril's actions and instead wraps her arms around him and tells him to be careful. As Amy and Elise make their way out, Emeril returns to the Solaris prototype to reactivate the machine. If there's a chance, he's going to try it. He grabs hold of the pipes and begins discharging chaos energy in an attempt to replicate the precise conditions that happened prior. Sure enough, a flood of electricity blankets the room and another purple portal opens overhead. Right as it does, Gemeral storms into the doorway and tries to thwart Emeril's plan, but the energy is impenetrable no matter how much he propels himself into it. As Emeril is pulled from the ground, and hovers towards the rift, Gemeral shouts to him from behind the barrier. Sensors locked. I will find you, Emeril. No matter where you go, I will find you. Emeril doesn't respond. He ascends and whirls, vanishing through time as the machine shuts down, leaving Gemeral enraged that his nemesis one-upped him once again. Emeril arrives in a dusty and dilapidated version of the Solaris prototype chamber. Initially believing his plan to have failed, he turns to the doorway ready to battle Gemeral, only to realize he's not there. He proceeds outside and beholds the ruined world. As questions race through his synaptics, he's suddenly able to feel that Sonic is out here somewhere. Due to his link with the Blue Blur, he can sense where he is in the same way that he followed him to Soliana. Without pause, Emerald takes off in Sonic's direction at Mach speed, plowing through a series of vicious creatures made up entirely of lava as he goes beyond city limits and out into the desolate wastes. Meanwhile, at Flame Core, Team Sonic along with Shadow and Rouge are about to secure one of the future Chaos Emeralds as a means to escape this hellish place. As they move in to secure the stone, a smoldering, snake-like monstrosity emerges from the magma. It's Iblis, the living and eternal flame. The giant roars as the cast ready themselves for a furious fight, but suddenly, before the battle even begins, Emeril arrives, diving from above and onto the creature's back. Using his library of abilities, Emeril accesses the power of Chaos Zero, whom he'd fought in the original Sonic battle. 
As he places the palm of his hand against the monster's back, his arm transforms into liquid and unleashes a torrent of water. Drowned and saturated by the deluge, Iblis is unable to move as its body rapidly cools and hardens into igneous rock. Emerald then takes his other arm, the Prower arm, forms his hand into Knuckles' fist and delivers a mighty megaton punch, demolishing Iblis' head and defeating the beast instantly. As chunks splash into the lava, what remains of Iblis slithers back from when it came. It will regenerate, but Emerald just savaged it in seconds, so it'll need some time to pick itself back together. The cast are thrilled and amazed by Emerald's arrival, and he's just relieved to see that everyone's okay. After Emerald whimsically reunites with Shadow and Rouge after having not seen them for a while, the team recap recent events, bringing their friend up to speed. He learns that they're currently 200 years in the future. Sonic and Shadow have collected two Chaos Emeralds of this era in an attempt to activate a joint Chaos Control and open a fissure to the present. During the conversation, Emerald notes that if the Emeralds are present in this future, that must mean he isn't. Indeed, the future Emerald did in fact perish. But how? The story proceeds as normal. Sonic and Shadow's dual chaos control tears open a vortex to the past. Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles jump through, and the rest prepare to do the same. Rouge enters the portal and turns just long enough to see what's postponing Shadow and Emerald. A sinister onlooker catches the attention of both of them. It's Mephilus the Dark. Emerald expresses instantaneous confusion at the presence of another near-identical shadow, and as he does, the real ultimate life form skates after the Dark Imposter. Emerald, worried for Shadow's safety, takes off following him. Now, you might think it's odd that Emerald would follow Shadow and not Sonic, what with their link and having just caught up to him. But you have to remember that Emerald's bond with Shadow also goes quite deep as well. Shadow was also the master of Emerald at one point. The two of them were linked. This was when Shadow gave Emerald the final Chaos Emerald and used Gerald's key phrase, bring hope to humanity, to activate a program left behind by the Professor. This code allowed Emerald to continue being himself rather than the weapon of mass destruction that his makers designed him to be. The link Shadow achieved was later severed when Supersonic combated Emerald aboard the Death Egg. So yeah, he owes a lot to Shadow. He's not about to just abandon him. And this also showcases Emerald's selflessness. He'll go with Shadow, even if it means he'll potentially be trapped in this future too. Shadow catches up to Mephilus, and the scene plays out as normal. Mephilus reveals the fate of the future Shadow, condemned and imprisoned by the world. Thus, he attempts to convince Shadow to join him and take revenge on humanity. Mephilus' tactics fall flat, however, as Emerald soon steps in, having overheard the entire thing. Don't listen to him, Shadow! If you turn bad, then... I'd have to fight you, and I don't want to do that. <laughs> you won't have to, Emerald. Our destiny is our own. No one can turn us into something we are not. Mephilus glares at Shadow and Emerald, realizing there's no further point in trying to beguile them. With a flash of light, Mephilus takes on his crystalline form and moves in to take on the pair. But it becomes quickly apparent who has the advantage. Shadow and Emerald's tag team coordination outsteps Mephilus at every turn. The malevolent evildoer's attacks nullified as Emerald quickly copies his fighting style. As Shadow is caught off guard by a stray energy blast, Emerald slides in from the side and cracks Mephilus across the jaw with another concussive blow. Fragments shatter loose from his face and he's sent slide across the ground. The strike shakes Mephilus to his core. In that one hit, he felt the scope of a boundless power that, if left unchecked, could grow to easily destroy him and leave nothing left. Mephilus limps to his feet and focuses his reptilian eyes on Emerald. With a mixture of anger and curiosity, he says, I see. You and I are the same. We take what belongs to others and make it our own. We change our form to suit our needs. I know what I am, but what are you? I'm Emerald, the strongest and most powerful Gizoid. I'm here to protect my friends and stop guys like you from hurting people. As Mephilus ponders the virtuous response and questions what a Gizoid even is, he suddenly detects something else that's special about Emerald. A swell of chaos energy emanating from within the robot's body. And as the reason for this becomes clear, Bullets come streaming out from nowhere and run through him. Mephilus is shot to high hell. He staggers backwards onto one knee as he, Emerald, and Shadow nearby turn to see E-123 Omega. Shadow is shocked by the arrival of his comrade, but before he can get a word out to him, 
Omega suddenly opens fire on Emeril, peppering him with a barrage of lead. Omega, cease fire! He's with me! He's on our side! Having never met, Shadow assumes that Omega's mistaken Emeril for an Eggman robot. However, that's not the reason he shot at him. Omega's Gatling gun arm whirs to a halt as his entire body begins to jerk and spasm. System intrusion. Functions compromised. I can't. To Shadow's horror, yellow spikes fire out from Omega's body. His head opens up into segments and begins to restructure itself as a second head races out from his body, revealing the cause of Omega's abnormal behavior. The other head is Gemeral's. I told you I would find you. And that's where we're gonna leave this story until tomorrow. So that's right, you see, I originally envisioned this 06 story to be one video, but it became quickly apparent when writing it that I, it just wouldn't work. So I had to split the story into multiple parts for a back-to-back -back upload. For those watching this video on the day of release or tuning into the premiere, part three will go up tomorrow. Until then, feel free to share your initial thoughts in the comments below. How will Shadow and Emerald combat this general-infused Omega? Will they be able to return to the present? What actions will Mephilus take following this encounter with a Gizoid? How do you think the rest of 06 will play out with Emerald in the mix? Find out very soon. I've been the Sega Scourge, and I'll see you guys in the next Sonic What If. Take care.